Good afternoon, LockDoc coming through here. Today we have a Simplex LL1021B. The B stands for best or small format IC core. 26D is the finish. 41 just means it comes in an individual package. Anyway, so today we're unlocking this beast of a lock. And on opening it up, let's see if I can do this without messing my camera up. Inside you'll find instructions on how to reset an unknown combination. Um, they go through it in three different languages. I posted a video the other day. Um, they don't like when you take it all apart, so all the new ones have these kind of cutouts in the combination chamber so you can see what's going on to make it easier. Um, but anyway, so there's that. Good old instructions. This is the backside faceplate. And the trick to getting this open is there. Alright. Once inside, you'll find the lock set. Ta da! Very beautiful lock. side lever and you have the strike packet that's a normal four and seven eighths inch strike uh, kind of accessory mounting packages here you'll find the faceplate cover screw uh, along with your what are these DF 59 keys strike box this is a spacer plate for invent of a thinner door the threaded collar and the latch bolt. So what's nice about these locks is essentially they're a mechanical access control lock that you can change the combination to relatively quickly. Uh, sometimes it's easier than an electronic one, but where these outshine the electronic ones is that it's all mechanical. These do not run off batteries. You don't need to upkeep with them or anything. Um, very beautiful straight out the box the factory combination is two and four together at the same time plus three so no, that one wasn't so that's the combination on it now so you want to change it all right let me get these kind of out of the way. I'll explain a little bit more about these things. Uh, what's very nice about these, um, there's typically only two parts that you generally ever go wrong with these, and they're housed within this lock body assembly here. Uh, one being the clutch assembly, the other one being the combination chamber. Um, upon looking at it here, very robust. Um, I know there was a video out that said if you held a magnet to this side, it negates the combination chamber and you can just kind of go in with it. Um, I've never heard a factory response as to whether that got taken care of or not. Then again, I don't imagine they would want to go advertising that because these are used on a lot of sensitive areas and high security areas. Um, but what from I've seen from combination chambers that I've come across is that they have a little C-ring in there that prevents uh, like a control arm from popping out of place. And we'll just see that here in just a second once I get all these screws out. <clears throat> I've personally always enjoyed working on these locks because it's a big 3D puzzle. And once you kind of understand them, they're not really that bad to fix and repair. Now I should say that opening this uh, does void the warranty, so make sure uh, if it's under warranty, you should get it replaced under the warranty. Uh, I would not go opening these up if that was not the case. Um, here's a handy dandy sticker to let them know if you've been in here. Um, I'm going to slightly peel it back. Mm 
There is another screw underneath here. That's enough for us to get to it. All right, let's open this bad boy up. Okay, so once you got all the six faceplate screws uh, from there, you just remove this top port portion here. One thing that is important to notice is the orientation of this piece right here. You want to make sure it's going horizontal in line with the lever. Um, it does make a difference, and it has to do with when this turns, how it interacts with this drive assembly there. Anyway, so on the inside here, um, okay, so what I was saying about the pieces that go bad the most. Um, clutch assembly, which is underneath this bell, how, bell cover here, or the combination chamber that's located here. Typically, there's easy ways to diagnose it. Um, if it is the combination chamber, um, you won't hear a click when you hit the buttons. Like, I don't know if you can hear this. Hear that click? If it was bad, you wouldn't hear the click. In fact, here if I hit the button again, you don't hear that click. And that's the lack of sound that I was referring to. Um, they have little tiny springs that control the cogs related to the buttons, and usually what ends up happening is the springs ended up stretching out and then they no longer work. Um, down here in the clutch assembly, a bad combination will register that motion right there. A correct combination will register that motion. So pretty much the clutch assembly dictates whether it goes down like that or up like that in the event of a correct combination. Uh, so quite simply, it usually is those two pieces. Um, your lever control spring is this big old hunking spring back here that runs pretty much the length of it. Um, so yeah, let's see what these parts look like. Um, underneath all this grease, you will find some letters to help you put it back together. The one on top looks to be a C. The one underneath looks to be a D. This way you know the correct order in which they go when you put it back together. Uh, the first step when taking it apart is you remove this screw and this screw. And that removes that kind of holding piece out of the equation. Uh, the next ones you want to get to, if it's the clutch assembly, is that screw. And then those two screws. If it's the combination chamber, it's that screw and that screw. Alright, so... If we were going to change the combination, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's get this all apart and I can show you some of these pieces. Uh, so let's start with the clutch assembly. So let's start here. Make note of the screw lengths. It is semi-important. Um, they have longer screws located up here, but shorter screws located down there even though they are all the same thread. Take that part out. Alright, so there we go. There's that. Alright, so let's start with the bell house cover. I have seen this piece break, um, but it's not a horrible break. Oh yeah, magnetic screws work awesome for uh, this thing. Or a magnetic screwdriver. But 
typically when this part breaks it has to do with where the screws are located as opposed to the actual piece itself breaking usually it's these tabs up here that break off and then this piece isn't as tight as it needs to be up there which causes the clutch assembly to, to uh, not to act correctly it, it acts as if it's giving false or you know a bad code is being entered when in reality it's just this piece isn't pushing down on the clutch assembly anyway so So that piece lifts out. Alright, this piece just lifts straight out like that. Pay attention though, uh, if you look right there, this is kind of like a pie shaped quadrant right there. And if you look down inside there, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but you'll see down there, uh, this actually fits down in there. That spring comes out. Alright, now here's where the C and D arms come into play. You take the C off, take the D. If you notice, the C has these notches on it, whereas D is just a straight circle. Um, these are handed. Um, there are some, the knob models, this piece is not a handed item. Uh, this one is, I believe, a left hand. Uh, the right hand model does this is on this side anyways then they have a little spring washer back here to uh, supply back tension to it if you lift it apart you can actually see in there there's two little nubs right there they fit into that piece to those little notches and there is a brass sleeve that's in here to just kind of keep the gunk and grime out. So let's put that back over there. Okay, this is called a stop plate. Actually, no, the piece underneath is the stop plate. Um, as you can see when you're turning it, that's what's stopping it. Alright, so get to the good stuff here. Here's the combination chamber. Alright, so here's the combination chamber. Uh, the C-ring I was telling you about uh, is pretty much that, although it sits on the inside of here. And let's see, is there any easy way to get... Alright, so, there have been videos done on the past that say if you hear, hold a rare earth magnet over here to the side, um, so you gotta think this will be sitting in there like this, uh, you can manipulate these locks. What I've found is it makes me wonder if they're removing this prior to doing the video and making it work, or maybe it was just a bad engineering design in the past, but as you look at it, there's a clip right there and that's going to prevent this from moving or being pulled out of place but if you were to use a rare earth magnet over here uh, that would interact with that because that would pull that out if this piece wasn't here it would fool the lock into thinking that it's a positive combination every time so in this case it's two and four and three we go and see how all the pockets are lined up that's how you know it's the combination anyway so we want to reset that but we'll do that here in just a second so I wanted to show that little tidbit right there because I've seen all the negative videos out there about these but I've never seen the positive 
video. So I'm fairly certain that negates that whole uh, rare earth magnet claim. Anyway, so let's put this all back together here. And these are just kind of pressed into place. So nothing too crazy in terms of reassembling it. Typically I can go put this in a vise and flatten this out and, you know, it's like nothing ever happened. Um, be right back. Well, like I said, like nothing ever happened. Alright, so underneath the stop plate you'll find a little plate that is also handed as well. So you remove this screw here, and this removes this big flat plate. Let me see that. Now it is handed because as you can see one side has a post in it and that's what connects your spring. If this was the opposite hand this would be over here and that would be over there and your spring would be coming down this side. Oh yeah these buttons these buttons sit free so don't move this or turn it upside down because they will go flying. Um, but yeah so here's the inside of the lock. That's a very nice, uh, I believe this is polished aluminum construction to basically deal with the harsh exterior environment that they're usually put into. But anyway, so let's put it all back together now. So, this piece. Let's see here. Oh, one thing to mention before I put this all back together. If you see how down here it's angled, kind of like stop sign. Um, the only time I've ever had to replace this piece had to do with this piece and it was very much rounded as opposed to angled in these corners. Uh, so I figure that, sh that should be mentioned. Although it's only happened once, so it's not that common. It's always easier to put the combination chamber in after, or I'm sorry, before the clutch assembly. It has to do with this screw down here, because I got fat fingers and I can't get the screwdriver down there. This is where having a magnetic screwdriver really comes in handy.
that's an incorrect combination. The correct combination goes all the way up. Ta-da. Thank you very much. Have a great day.